Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how I transform a $5 IT t-shirt into a cardigan. So let's get started. I started with a 3XL IT t-shirt I got from the clearance section at Walmart. I got two of them just in case. Also, I got a cardigan that I like the fit off so I could use it as my template. I started off by cutting the sleeves next to the seam line because I want to save as much fabric as possible from the front and back of the panel. I did that with both sleeves. Also, I cut the shoulder seam close to the seam line again to save as much fabric as possible. The same with the collar. The collar is going to become the sleeve cuff. Finally, I separate the front and the back layers of the fabric, cutting from the side seams. If your shirt does not have a side seam, you can simply cut from the sides. Now, I take the front panel and smooth it out on a flat surface and place on top of my cardigan that I'll use as my template. Yes, I switched cardigans. The other one was a bit too stretchy to trace and this one, which I made myself, is perfect to trace with. I folded it in half and pinned all the extremities of it to make tracing easier. I trace the sides from one side only and cut them out, so when I fold it in half, I can cut a mirror image of it. This is what I was left with, almost identical. However, I refolded it in half to cut the excess fabric that I might left on the other side, and this is what I was left with. For the front panel, I forgot to hit record, but, but basically, I folded the back panel in half and traced that shape twice on my back panel, the one with no graphics. Before cutting the shapes, I extended the middle to form a V shape, since the front and the back of the cardigans are never the same, only the sides. And I was left with this. You need to. I recommend you to mark the right side of the fabric with shock so you won't sew it the wrong sides. Now, to make pockets, I'm using one of the sleeves of the shirt. I put my hand on top of the fabric and measure how big I want my pockets and roughly mark it. And with a ruler, I knit the lines. All of this taking into consideration the seam allowance. I use the hem of the sleeve as the top of my pocket, that way I don't have to hem it. Now, I pin the pockets in place with half an inch folded from both sides. Not folding the bottom, but lining lining it with the bottom of the piece, so a straight stitch on top of the pockets from both sides to attach it. Repeat this for the other panel. Don't worry about the bottom not being so, that will be fixed in a bit. We're going to put together the front and back panel. Pin both front panels to the back panel here, right side stitching, and sew with a 6 head stitch. Once you are done, you can sew a straight top stitch if you want. Next, pin the sides together and sew them together with a 6 head stitch. And we're left with the vest for now. I decided to try it on to see how it fit and realized the bag was a bit too high, so I cut it down a bit. Next, to hem, you cannot see me but I'm doing air quotes. Anyway, to hem the edges, we are going to use the hemline of the shirt. Uh, yeah, I ended up using the hemline of both shirts and the hemline of the other sleeve that I didn't shop for the pockets. I cut the hemline really close to the stitches to leave me with a very long strip of fabric. I cut the sleeve hem in half and pin it to both of the ends of the t-shirt hem and sew them together right side touching to give me a longer strip that I'll use on the inside hem of the now best. I pinned them right side touching and I sew them with a six sack stitch all around and once I was done, I faced them outwards and top stitched it to give it a more professional finish. For the bottom, I did the exact same thing except that I didn't need it to add more pieces to make it longer and at the end I folded the strip on itself before pinning and sewing so that way it will finish the bottom piece. And the main body is done! For the sleeves, I had to use the other shirt since I didn't have enough fabric for all of the cardigans as I had thought. <laughs> I folded the bottom on itself, right side touching, and I traced the sleeve, leaving some seam allowance. Once I cut one of the sleeves, I needed to cut the other one. I realized that I didn't have enough fabric for this, so I had to think of a solution. I placed the remaining of the back fabric of T-shirt 2 on top of the front of the T-shirt 2. Don't worry, the graphics from T-shirt 2 will survive. I trace and cut that. What I will do is to sew the seams on the outer part of the sleeve and it will be a decorative seam. So, since the other sleeve was connected, I'll have to cut the side. Pin the top of the sleeve and sew it together with a small zigzag stitch and a top stitch as well. Do the same for the bottom but do not top stitch, although that might be hard anyways. Now we have some cuffless sleeves. To make the cuffs, I'll be using the fabric from the color since it's knit fabric and it's stretchier than the simple cotton fabric of the shirt. At first, I try to seam rip the color from the remains of the fabric to save as much of the color as possible, but this proved extremely difficult, so instead I cut the excess fabric with scissors cutting extremely close to the hemline, and I repeated this with the color of shirt too. 
Next, I measured how much fabric I needed for my hand. Since the knit stretches, I cut the piece a bit smaller than my wrist, keeping in mind the seam allowance. I cut four identical pieces. I'm going to join two pieces together to form a bigger piece for the cuff. Sew the two pieces together right side touching with a zigzag stitch. Next, fold this in half and sew it sideways with a zigzag stitch. Now, fold the cuff wrong side touching and we have our cuff. Just spin it in place and sew it like so to the sleeve and repeat all of this for the other cuff and the other sleeve and ta-da! We have our sleeve. To attach them, silly me, I forgot to hit record again, but this is basically what I did. With both pieces wrong side out, I inserted the sleeve on its respective armhole, lining both sewed ends of the sleeve and the body like so and pinning everything in place. Once everything was pinned, I sew with a straight stitch first and top stitch it with a zigzag stitch for extra security. And with this, the cardigan is basically done. Well, almost. It's missing buttons. There's just one problem for me. I hate sewing button plackets. However, I came up with a solution. Firstly, I took the cardigan that I first showed you and lined the edges where the button holes are and I marked it with a washable pencil from both sides, where the buttons will be and the air quotes button plackets. Next, I took one of the sleeves from shirt 2 and cut the hem of it. As you may notice, there are two top stitches on a hem. I used my scissors to cut down next to the first stitch road, cutting off the second one. With the button, I turned the hem inside out to form a tube of fabric. I measure how much fabric of the tube I'll need so the buttons will go through. Taking into consideration the seam allowance, and I cut it out. And I cut four identical strips of it. Next, I pin the fabric tube, forming a loop inside the cardigan, and I pin all the loops in place, and sew each one with a small zigzag stitch, and BAM! Air quote button plackets. And all there's left to do is to pick the buttons. I chose these red ones that I thought resemble pom poms and I just sewed them in place. I'm not going to show you how to do that because that's actually pretty simple. And that's pretty much it. We are done. So that's it for this video guys, I hope you like it, if you like it don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you are you know I love you, don't forget to slap that notification bell that is right there next to the subscription button so you'll never miss any of my future videos. If you make any of my DIYs, whether they are fandom related or not, you can always tag me with the hashtag Unbroken Creation on Instagram or Twitter so I can browse and like and comment your pictures. If you have an idea for a future video or if you want to let me know what did you think of this video, don't forget to comment down below in the comment section. As always, you can always follow me on all my social media that are sprinkled down below in the video description. And that's it for the video guys, I'll see you in the next one, bye bye!